Hey everyone, welcome back to another TEAS lesson. Today we're gonna continue on that kind of genetics part of a TEAS. And today we're gonna look at the different types of inheritance and kind of continue on some topics related to meiosis. Okay, so this is a comparison between the uh, two versions of TEAS. So this is about Mandel's laws of inheritance. And based on the license title, you can see that there's a little bit change. Previously, ATI wanted you to just kind of be able to explain the laws of inheritance. But now um, you need to be able to apply the concepts and solve some kind of practical questions. So you may see some kind of specific cases, examples, right, with numbers, and you need to figure out uh, what the offspring may be like, right? So I think that's what the kind of the apply part is about. Um, you need to be able to solve uh, real world questions. All right, now let's look at the specific objectives. Um, some of the new objectives in T7 are really about uh, just the, the wording, right? So it's, it's old content, but now they kind of phrase them a little bit differently. I pointed them out here, for instance, distinguish between genotype and phenotype. It was in T6, it was, defi uh, it was definitely mentioned in the study manual, but right now it's noted as a new objective. And another one is explain how alleles are inherited from parents. That's also old content, but they just kind of really tease it out and list it as a new objective. Um, everything is um, similar. You still need to know the differences between dominant and recessive traits. And um, you need to be able to apply the uh, Punnett square to predict traits of offspring. So I think, again, this is more about that kind of apply part. There is a new objective, and this is related to meiosis. You need to be able to explain how meiosis results in genetic variation. So I touched on this very briefly when we were in the meiosis lesson. I mentioned there are primarily two ways as to how meiosis can contribute to genetic variation in offspring, right? Because all the um, gametes can be genetically unique. And we're going to talk about those two factors here. All right, so let's go over the new objectives in T7. First, distinguish between genotype and phenotype. So genotype refers to the genetic makeup, right? What kind of alleles you have. So if this is about complete dominance, then do you have the dominant alleles? Do you have the recessive alleles? Or do you have one of each, right? And you already know that there should be two alleles for each gene, right? It's a combination of two alleles because you inherit your genetic material from your two parents. So you will get one of the two alleles from each of your parents. So your genotype should consist of letters, right? Because we use letters to indicate the alleles. Capital letter, dominant allele. Lowercase letter, that's recessive allele. So your genotype would be two capital letters. That means you are homozygous dominant. And then in this case, big W, little w, that's heterozygous dominant, right? Hetero means different. So you have one dominant and one recessive allele. And then over here, that's just recessive. Phenotype refers to the trait and appearance, what an individual looks like. Right. And then that's a result of the expression of the two alleles, like what kind of combination you have. So when we describe phenotypes, we usually describe that particular trait or appearance. Right. There are some examples here. Jocelyn has a straight hairline. So straight hairline, that's the trait. That's the phenotype. Oscar has dark brown eyes, and that's the phenotype. How about this last one? The dog has a fluffy long tail fluffy and long tail, that's the phenotype. So that's pretty easy to differentiate, right, between letters or a statement of what something looks like. All right, so here's a practice question.
All right. How about A? The plant is heat and drought resistant. Oh, have a typo here. Resistant. Um. So this is a description of what the plant is like. Right. It has this awesome characteristic of you know having that heat and drought resistance. So this is going to be phenotype. Next one. My goal is heterozygous for hemophilia. So heterozygous, even though you don't see letters, it kind of indicates what the genotype looks like, right? Heterozygous, that means my goal has a, um, a dominant allele and a recessive allele, right? So it really kind of tells you what the combination of allele is for my goal for this particular gene. So this is genotype. Next one, an albino deer is recently discovered in southern Colorado. Albino, that means the deer is white, right? So the pigment genes are not expressed. So the deer is white as opposed to having that regular the tan color. So this is phenotype. Last one, Jose has learned from genetic testing that he is the, this particular genotype for color vision. So I see letters. Uh, so this is pretty obvious that this is a genotype. Okay.